It's the untold story of what hundreds of women, girls and a handful of men in Salisbury did during the Second World War. Secret Spitfires is the result of a three-year project to uncover a secret operation in the city where 2,057 Spitfires were built by an untrained workforce. It was the result of further digging at the rumours that led to the film's launch. I spoke to Norman on the phone and uh, what, what little hair I've got left on my head <laughs> stood up and realised that something really special had gone on and this was, this was the, the start of the process. Um, and then two days later, um, in a very uh, Spitfire Fairy, we call it. The Spitfire Fairy has been part of this, this story. Some very odd coincidences have happened. And uh, Etam Chutintash, member of BAFTA, living in Salisbury, what could, what could be better? So Etam and I went to see Norman, and uh, it was quite astonishing, the amount of uh, material and information that Norman Parker uh, has. So uh, Etam decided there and then we were going to make a film. Norman is the historian behind the tales in the film and is also a part of the story, having been an aircraft fitter at the time. We just had a job to do. We did it. Um, no thought of making um, films like this in 60 years' time. Uh, just had a job to do, got on and did it. It's a very busy organisation, very complicated organisation, but it worked. All the experts said it couldn't, but it did. We made it work. After the Spitfire factories were bombed in Southampton, other premises needed to be found. Reading and Trowbridge were also locations that were involved in the next phase of secret Spitfires building. In Salisbury, um, most of the places were fairly big garages, no more than that. Whereas Reading, um, there were garages, there were all sorts of places turned up, and likewise in Trowbridge. In fact, Trowbridge, there was a steamroller works, building steamrollers, in one part of the factory and Spitfires in the other. So it was just totally open-ended question. Go out, find suitable premises, premises and um, take them over. The film focuses on the people behind the Spitfires, especially the women who were involved in the operation, from grandmothers to schoolgirls. I think it's, it demonstrates the, 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 the power that, that, that women have, latent power, too, too, too often it's latent power, which lies there until somebody sparks it into life. And um, these girls were, were totally dedicated. They worked 12 hour days, six days a week, uh, or with, with rationing and with their loved ones uh, away at, at war, missing, killed and so forth. They carried on through it all. It's an enormous power of determination. And, and it's, it's a non-industrial area, Salisbury. There was no industrial experience in, in the area. No engineering took place here of any experience at all. And yet they, uh, they built 2,057 Spitfires, essentially, in the centre of town. And women also flew them out. Since the project's launch in December 2014, there have been obstacles to overcome. Most of the information didn't exist. And I can tell you one thing. When we first put the story out, saying we we're doing this story, we kept getting accused of um, the, the fake news. A lot of people were writing on Facebook saying, you're just basically creating this because you're just trying to make some stupid story about girls building Spitfires. No such thing ever happened. And you're just doing this because you're trying to make money out of a no story. And it was, it was very, very difficult to come over. But fortunately, through that attack, loads of other people came on board who also knew bits and pieces of what was happening, and they started feeding information in, and all of a sudden the whole thing took off. The film is currently playing at Salisbury Odeon Cinema, but with positive reactions so far, the team are hoping to take the film to a wider audience. It, it really has been an amazing reaction. Everybody is really... I think everybody's grateful the story's got out. They're not grateful that we did it because, you know, it's basically you made a film, you can make a film. I think people are grateful that we managed to get the story out of their grandparents and their parents and their, you know, cousins and nephews and whatever else. And it's a story that's never been known. And all of a sudden, it's a huge pride for a city. They're now looking to show the film in schools to aid their education on the Second World War. Cara Digby, that's TV.